OK, so I make it one o'clock. Um, there is, as usual, a sort of 30 second delay. Um, the first thing to say is that the usual discussion post will go up a little bit slower today, but it will go up. And um, I was having a few issues with the website this morning, so I haven't yet loaded um, the free template onto the website, but I will be doing that um, straight after. I'll try and see if I can persuade it to work. And you'll be able to download um, a free template of the spreadsheet we're making today. So you don't have to make it yourself, but I think it's really important that you do go through and try and make it yourself so you actually understand how it works and you understand what you're doing and also that you can sort of make it work for you. So as with our previous seminars, if you've got any questions throughout the seminar, please do just put them onto the little chat on the side of your screen. Um, I will systematically go through those and have a look and answer questions. Um, so if you've got any questions, put them there. If you've got any questions afterwards, um, you can use the discussion post to help you with that. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting together a massive spreadsheet to help us catalogue our model horses. Now cataloguing our model horses is really, really important. The first and primary reason that we catalogue our model horses is simply so we know who they are. If you've got a large collection, you can often lose track of show names, stable names, which model is which, sometimes even if you own a model or not. I know that probably sounds shocking to some of you, but I'm pretty sure there are horses that I own multiples of because I forgot I already owned them. So this can be a really good way of helping you keep track of your collection, helping you get a bit more organised and helping you with things like show entries. The second reason that we need to do this, which is really, really important, is for insurance. We need to have a detailed record of our collection in case the worst happens. And I'm going to make a few suggestions at the end as to how you can store this spreadsheet to ensure that if you were to have something horrible like a house fire, you at least have it stored somewhere that you can access it. And unfortunately, this is, you know, the second really, really big reason. The third really important reason is that unfortunately, at some point, every single one of us will leave this wonderful world and go off to whatever is in the next life. And as a result, uh, someone is going to have to sell or disperse our collection and they are going to need records and they're going to need records that they can use. So this spreadsheet is very much for you, but it is also very much for other people. So you need to include as much information as possible. OK, so we're going to be starting off with a Microsoft Excel document. Now, any similar program will work, but some of the features we do today may not be available in other programs. If you don't have access to something like Microsoft Office, Google do have their own free version through Google Sheets that you can use. Um, that pretty much works in exactly the same way. It's just got slightly more limited functionality. OK, so you're starting off with your brand new blank Excel document. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create some different sheets for the different finishes of model. Now, I split these up according to show divisions. You can split these however you want, but I think this is the quickest and the easiest way to do it and the most convenient. So we're going to go through the major divisions and we're going to create a sheet for each one. So to change the name of our sheet, we just double click. And then we write in what we want to call it. So we're going to start off with OF. Then we're going to add another one for custom. We're going to add one for ARC. So that's artist resin and China. We're going to add one for commercial resin and China. I like to keep these away from OF. And the reason I do that is because they're usually shown in a separate division. We're also going to create one today for CTF. Now, I keep my CTF combined, um, but you may want to split it into plastic and bendy. If you are not in the UK and you don't have um, CTF as a division, you may just want to leave that out and put them into OF. It's entirely up to you. Um, and then we're going to create two more additional sheets that I think are actually really important sheets to create. So the first one we're going to create is for things that are not horses. Now, this may sound silly when we're all model horse collectors that we're going to create a sheet for our other animals. 
But actually, I bet if you went and counted all of your non horses and added up all of their values, it would come to quite a surprising amount. And if we remember that purpose of creating this as a record, particularly for insurance, then this is actually quite important that we record these as well. And the final one I'm going to do is for medallions and busts and I just like these separate you might want to just put these in artist resin in China as well but I, I keep them separate because they don't show in sort of the same divisions at live shows so I like to keep them a little bit separate okay so we've got all of our sheets down here you can if you want of course color code them so if you right click you can click tab color and you can create them all kinds of pretty rainbow colors if you want and what we're going to do now is we're going to create all of our headings and these are the headings of the information that we put in so lynn has just said that she has one for her other animals and also one for her riders yeah i've been meaning to catalog my riders for a really long time lynn and i think that's an absolutely brilliant idea cataloging your tack your performance stuff and your riders is actually also really really important we're not going to cover that today but if you particularly if you've got really expensive tack sets you want to keep a record of those too. If you think that um, a good tax set could be setting you back several hundred pounds at least, and a good doll and similar amount, I've seen tax for sale for closer to a thousand dollars. You really want to be keeping a record of that. Okay, so we're going to start with these headings now because they're headings, I like them to be bold. So if we just click here to select the whole row, and we're just going to click B there for bold. So I'm just going to take a sip of my tea because my throat is awful at the moment. And we're going to start. So the first thing we are going to do are our names. So all model horses should have two names. They should have a stable name and a show name. And your show name is what you show that horse as. So I, my horse's show name might be past lives or grandiose futures or pink sparkly bum fluff it doesn't really matter what you call your horse and a stable name i normally for original finished models will keep the name that the model comes with because i just find that easier but your stable name is basically a shortened version of your show name for real horses the reason you will have both of these is because what you call it in the stable and what you call it the show are going to be two really different things so something like race horses they have to have unique names so the as a result of this if you think thousands and thousands of race horses every single year they've all got to have unique names um eventually the names just get a bit stupid and so having an easy to remember stable name and something short that you can use in the stable it just makes life a little bit easier so we're then going to add um the sort of the most important information about a horse so we're going to start off with breed so what breed the horse is um, we're not going to talk too much about choosing breed today because obviously we've done a seminar on that already. So if you go back and look through either our YouTube channel or our Facebook page or our website, you can find that seminar. Then the colour of the horse and their gender. So whether they are a mare, a gelding or a stallion and also their scale. So of their stable mate, traditional, you might want to put that in numbers if you prefer to have it in numbers. I tend to just generally use the sort of five general scales. We're then going to put some information about the model itself. So we're going to put the make. So whether it's sort of Breyer, Schleich, Peter Stone, I want to have the original model number. So most original finished models will come with a number. So like 1712 or 4609. So that's a really good way to ID them. I want the original model name. Now, this might be the same as your stable name. So the one we're going to do later, it's going to be the same. But it might also be different because it might just be sort of Appaloosa or Bay Thoroughbred. Or you might have given it a different name. We're then going to do the mould. So that is, for example, a G2 Appaloosa or the Connemara Mare mould or whatever mould it is. We're going to have the year produced. So I put the full range of production in there. So when was it actually made? Now that is a seems like a sort of OK, interesting, but not the end of the world column. But this column here is really, really useful if you enter any shows that have vintage divisions, because we're going to show you at the very end how to apply filters and how you can use that 
to help you pick models for showing and having the year produced is really, really helpful for that. We're then going to add some more information to help us identify our model on the shelf. So we need to know what face markings it has. We also need to know the leg markings. So the way I do my leg markings is I have four columns for each leg. So I go left four. And remember, when I'm talking about left, we talk about it from like the horse's point of view. So imagine you're standing behind the horse. I do left hind. My nails are really long. It's very hard to type. And then we go right four and then right hind. And then we basically we've got quite a lot of information there to help us ID the model. But we need one more thing to help us identify a model, and that is finish. So if, like me, you own both the glossy and matte variations of particular models, that column is going to be really, really helpful because apart from the stable name and show name, all of this could be completely identical. We're now going to in include the information that is really what we're going to need for insurance and for our own records. So I want to put in the year that it was purchased. So when did I get this model? I'm going to put in its value. I'm going to, oops, I've missed one out there in my notes. We need purchase amount, so how much we bought it for, and then value. We are not going to discuss in any great detail today how to value models. And that's because we are going to be doing a seminar at a later date about identifying and valuing models. So we're not going to discuss that in a huge amount of detail. Today is all about creating the spreadsheet and getting your records in order. And then in a later date, we're going to discuss how do we actually find out who a horse is and how much it might be worth. So I then have the sire and the dam. Now, you may not be into pedigrees. If you're not, then obviously you can leave these columns out. Um, a lot of my horses have pedigrees. The vast majority do not. But I have it there as my record anyway. You're then going to have a column that you're going to call photo reference, just photo ref for short. And we're going to talk about that. Um, in a little bit when we actually put some horses into this spreadsheet. And this is basically going to be the unique ID code for that model. So that is the code that you're going to use. It's going to cross reference for a photograph and that is going to be that model horse's code and it's going to help you identify that horse. What we're going to do now is we're going to add some showing information. So if you don't show, you probably don't want to put these columns in. But if you do, then these are really useful columns to have. So these first three columns, my X, my Y and my Z, are going to be for BMEX or NAN qualifications. So I'm going to start off by putting 18, 19, 20, and then I'm going to go 19, 20, 21. And then I'm going to go 20, 21, 22. And if my horse has qualified in that year, so say I went to a show in January and he got a BMEX ticket, I just type yes underneath. And again, that's really useful for your records because you've got all of the shows that are valid for this year and you can see whether or not your horses have qualified. So it may be that they qualified three years ago. Um, what you can do is you can delete them when you take them to BMEX as well. I actually just marked them in red. Um, so that I know that the ticket's been used. But that will give you a good idea of who you still need to qualify. And maybe if you're at the like the last qualifying show and you're thinking, oh, I've got no OF quarter horses, or I don't think I've got any OF quarter horses, you can have a look and see if you have qualified any OF quarter horses or not. Um, we're then going to add some information that's going to help us know and keep a record of how well our horses are going to be doing. So we're going to put in here points and then we're going to put shows attended and then we're going to be putting average points and we're going to come back and do the formulas in a bit. We're not going to do them now, but basically I have a system whereby when my horse is placed, they get a certain number of points and I'm going to come back and cover this later once we've set these spreadsheets up. I then record how many shows they've attended and then my average points are what are the average points that horse is getting at shows. So I might have a horse that like Schmexy, who you probably all know, my lovely um, Aquarium Saddlebred, he has a really high number of points. He's got over 600 points, but actually his average points are really, really low. 
And that's because he's attended so many shows and he just doesn't do as well as he used to do. However, newer horses like Albert, my little rubber Ned uh, trainer, he's my um, highest average points and he's got a huge average point count that's uh, like 70 or 80. And that's because basically every show he's been at, he's done exceptionally well. And so the average points is really, really helpful in letting you know, actually, are the horses doing really, really well still? Um, and who is my best horse? But you can also use the actual aggregate points. OK, so this is our spreadsheet for OF. For custom, we're basically going to be doing the same thing up to a point. So up to this point, everything is going to be identical. So I'm just going to highlight here by clicking and dragging with my mouse. And then I'm going to copy and paste. And to copy and paste, I'm going to hold down Control, which is the little button that says CTRL. And I'm going to hold down C as well. And you can see that selected those cells. And I want them in all of these spreadsheets. So all I'm doing is I'm just clicking and I just click Control and then V. And that allows me to paste. So I want those for all of those. So I'm just going to do that now. But for custom, so we're back on custom, we're going to need some different information. So we've got the stable name, show name, breed, colour, gender, scale and make. But custom model horses don't have production numbers because they're customs. And we're going to need some different information for them. So we're going to need to know the name of the artist. Now, you may want to have two separate columns one for the customising artist, the person who's done re-sculpting and remodelling, and one for the finished work artist. I, generally speaking, don't own reworked models. I tend to own simple repaints, so I just have one column because I've only got one horse, I think, in my entire collection that is made by two different people. So I just put a slash in there. We're then going to need to know the mould. Again, we're going to try and identify them. So um, that is just the original mould that the model was. I then want to know the year it was painted. So instead of year produced, we're going to be having year painted. And then the next few columns are exactly the same. So we're going to have face markings, left fore, left hind, right fore and right hind. Again, you can just copy and paste this if you want. And then I want to know the year purchased, uh, purchase amount. Now, I actually have a different column in here. And that's because quite often I will be paying for paint jobs on models. So I actually have a column that tells me how much did this paint job cost? So if I bought, say, the original Brea model, the fact that I bought it for £40 is irrelevant because I then paid someone like Deb Brown £120 to paint it. So actually my actual cost of the model goes up from being £40 to about £160 because I've paid for the paint job on top. And it may be that you didn't pay, pay for the paint job, so you might just have a purchase amount. I bought this whole model for £150 on eBay. And then again, we want to know the value. We want to have their sire and their dam if we like to have pedigrees. And we want this photo reference column. Really, really important column. And we're basically going to be doing a similar thing with show results, but I'm going to have to do something a little bit different with customs as well. So we're going to start with 18. 19, 20, then we're going to go 19, 20, 21, and then we're going to go 20, 21, 22, and we're going to say spreadsheet, why didn't you make that bold? And then we are going to put a line. So custom horses can qualify in two divisions. They qualify in both breed and they can also qualify in workmanship. And because of this, we're going to need to create three more columns. So I'm just going to copy and paste again because I'm lazy. So control C, control V. And because I want to make it really clear to me that this is workmanship, I change it to a different colour. I have it in blue. You can obviously have it in any colour you want. So that just shows me without me having to put anything in there, don't have to write workmanship or anything like that. I know that the blue section is for workmanship qualification and the black is for breed. So we're going to have to put in those show points as we did before. So show points, shows attended, 
average points. And as you can hit, see here, sometimes Excel thinks that it knows what you want. And this is not what I want, Excel. I do not want this to be blue because this is for breed. So we're going to have it in black, if that's OK with you. So we've got those three and exactly the same thing. We're going to need it twice. And the reason we're going to need it twice is because we have workmanship. So we're going to put it in twice and we're going to put it in blue. So we've got um, two sets of duplicated information. Black is breed, blue is workmanship. You may want to do um, workmanship in a different colour. You may want to highlight the cells so you could sort of highlight them, maybe have them in yellow or something like that. Entirely up to you. I don't know why I chose blue, but I did. So I'm just going to stick with it or I'm going to get confused. So moving on to artist resin. Artist resin, really, really similar to custom. So we are going to need sort of similar information, um, but we've got a bit of extra that I like to include for, um, for artist resin. So we don't need the make of the model because it's an artist resin, not um, a custom or a brayer. So instead, I'm going to put sculptor. So again, we've got all of the same information here. So after sculptor, I'm going to need to know the artist. So that's the finished work artist. I want to know the mould, so the name of the resin. And I want to know the year it was painted. Now, after this, absolutely everything is identical to our custom spreadsheet. So we're going to save some time by copying and pasting. So we're going to go back to custom, click on it. And we're going to just copy and paste. So we're going to select from face markings all the way to the end. So artist resins go in workmanship as well. So we're going to have to have these extra columns. And I'm going to click back to AR and we're going to go control and V and that's going to copy and paste. Now that is worth noting that there are some horses that you might have under artist resin if you show in the UK that can't go in workmanship. So um, for anyone who's watching who's not from the UK, in the UK, animal artistry go in the ARC section, not in OF China. However, unless they are painted by an artist outside of animal artistry, they do not go in workmanship. So you may have some horses here that are not eligible for workmanship. So you may like to have your animal artistry in a separate sheet. But you may also have animal artistries that are painted um, by a different artist. The one we're going to look at today is going to be a, is a cold painted AA that I have painted. So I generally think just put them all together. I like less is more here. If the finishes can be combined into a bigger section, I like to have them together because that just makes it a bit easier for me. OK, so we've done OF, we've done custom, we've done ARC. As you can see, it does take a bit of time to set this up, but if you just do a bit of copying and pasting, it does make life easier. So we're going to go to CTF now. Now, CTF is interesting because you're going to have a mix of models that are mass produced and a mix of models that are essentially handmade. So we need to have quite a few columns and we're probably going to have a few columns that might stay blank for some models. But that's OK. It's OK to have some blanks. So I'm going to treat this very similar to how we treat OF. I'm going to start with original model number. Now, Schleich, um, Brea Mini Winnie's, Collector, Papo, Safari, all of those will have a model number. Some aquariums, juleps um, and things like that that are produced for events may also actually have a model number or a catalogue number. Things like catalogue originals will have a product number. So you can put that in there. I need to know the original model name. So again, if you've um, got things like Schleich and Collector, they're going to have a model name. They're going to be sort of um, Icelandic stallion or something like that. Um, with Juleps, again, catalog originals, catalog Juleps are going to have an original uh, model name. They might be called Storm or Minstrel or Ebony. Those were all catalog originals or the horse of the year range. Obviously, you're going to have, the, you know, Puzzle and Pandora. Um, models like a quorums, you're probably less likely to have that piece of information. Um, so you can just leave that blank. I then want the mould. So what mould is it produced on and the scale? I then also obviously want the year produced if I know it. If you don't know some of this information, that's OK, don't worry. I then have this column 
which I keep thinking about deleting, but I've still got it, so I'm going to put it on here. I have a column for material slash finish. And the reason I have this is because actually for me, this is a filter to filter CTF between bendy and plastic. Because in here, I might put plastic, I might put latex, I might put handmade, or um, I might put felt. And I can then use that to help me filter my CTF down. So we've done material slash finish. We're going to be doing pretty much the same thing. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to take all of this out of here and I'm going to copy and paste. But we're not going to want this paint job cost because um, we haven't commissioned these. We haven't bought the model and had them painted. There may be some you've done that for. So you could add that in. But generally speaking, we'll get rid of that. So we've got the same stuff. We've got face markings, the four columns for the different leg markings. We've got the year that they were purchased, the purchase amount, the value, the size of the dam and the photo reference. And I've also copied and pasted in here our 18, 19, 20 and 2061 columns. So then we just need to finish off with our show points. Our shows attended. And our average points. Beautiful. Look how stunning our spreadsheet is looking. OK. Now, commercial resin and china. You may want to combine this into OF. I like to keep it completely separate, but the information is pretty much identical to OF. The only difference is that I do have an extra column. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy and paste and add an extra column. So go back to OF and copy and paste all of this information all the way across here. Go back to our commercial resin china and copy and paste. So just control C and then control V. I'm going to add an extra column in here, and that is because we've got two very different types of models combined. We've got resins and we've got chinas. So you might want to add this into your ARC as well. Um, I don't have it in my ARC, but I do have it in here. So after scale, actually, let me put it here. I've got them in a slightly different order on my notes, but that's okay. I'm going to put material slash finish. So basically, this is where I write whether it's resin or china, or it might be a sort of weird composite of them both. But generally speaking, I put either resin or china. You don't need to include this. This is something I like to include. So as you can see, we've basically then got the same as we've had for every single other one. We're going to add these lines just because I like to keep these lines here. You do not need the lines, but the lines make me happy. And we've got lots of really useful information. OK, now we're going to move on to things that are not horses. So I'm just going to have a quick sip of my tea. OK, things that are not horses, dogs, cats, dolphins, narwhals, anything you want. So we're going to start off with very similar columns. We're going to start off with stable name, show name, breed and colour. Four pieces of really easy, simple information. However, I like to be very particular with my other animals. I have their proper breed in there. But when I'm trying to identify, sometimes that can be quite difficult because actually all my julep rabbits pretty much look the same, even though I've given them all very particular rabbit breeds. So I also put in here species. So that lets me know whether it's a dog, a cat, a rabbit, a kiwi, a Oh, God only knows what else. Um, but that's really, really useful in terms of me trying to identify which of the sort of 22 grey julep rabbits is the one that I'm I'm looking at. So I then put make. Um, I then do have those same columns that I would have in OF. I have the mould. I have the year produced. And I do still have because they often have markings, um, these columns for markings. 
So I then want the finish. I want the year purchased, the purchase amounts. Some of this is so similar. You guys must know it by now. Value, sire, dam, and our photo ref. I don't keep show records because they don't really show. They do go in fun classes and stuff like that, but I don't really keep a record of that. Um, so yeah, I just leave it at that. Obviously you can keep those sort of records if you want. So medallion and bust. So this I keep separately because they are different um, because they only show in workmanship. However, the information I have is literally exactly the same as I would for any other artist resin. So just go into ARC, control C, control V, add that in, and then you can just add um, these columns in here. Now, if you are gonna be really obsessive about this, like I am, because they only show in workmanship, these columns should not be black because workmanship is blue. So we're gonna put them in blue, even though they don't have a breed section that they show in, I still have these in blue to remind me that it is workmanship that they are showing in. Okay, so a quick sip of, sip of my tea. Emma says that her other admiral spreadsheet is just a picture of Gavin. Well, I hope Gavin has very detailed records, Emma. I would be very upset if he doesn't. Gavin, for those of you who don't know, is an orca. Not a real one, a cuddly one. And he's he's terrifying in every way. OK, so we've got the basic bones of our spreadsheet and it's looking absolutely beautiful. I think we can all be very proud of ourselves for our spreadsheet. But a spreadsheet is no good without data. So we're going to catalogue some models now. And I have got five beautiful model horses that we're going to catalogue. So we've got an OF in the form of Mason here. We've got a custom in the form of Ariana. We've got an artist resin in the form of Loki. We have a CTF in the form of Elas. And um, I didn't have a commercial resin, so we're gonna leave that, it's very similar. Um, and we've got another animal in the form of Lizzie the Sloth. So we're gonna start off with Mason. So Mason is an original Finnish brayer. So we need to start putting our information in our spreadsheet. So stable name. Mason's stable name is Mason. Very easy. Show name. Now I use a prefix. So when I'm showing, you'll see all my results have my prefix, CRS, which stands for Chestnut Ridge Stables, and then my horse's name. Every single one of my horses has this prefix. So I don't need it because I know that they all have the prefix and it's just going to be messy. So what I recommend if you don't, if you use a prefix, is just don't bother um, and just put their show name in. Um, Mason's show name is Dolphin. Don't ask me why, it just is. I came up with names at five o'clock this morning for these horses, so I apologise. So his breed. Now, if you remember back to our seminar on breeds, uh, you'll remember that Mason is an American saddlebred because I used him in his box uh, in that example. So he's been freed from his box. Colour. Just double check what colour is he? Yeah, he's definitely grey. Gender. Um, I'm going to assume that he's a stallion. I don't have him here with me to double check. So 90% of my putting in of gender is probably wrong. Scale. He is classic scale. Make. He's a brayer. Now, I don't know this piece of information off my head. So I'm going to show you a quick trickety trickety trick to find out these pieces of information. So. We're going to go to our internet browser and we're going to go to identifyyourbrayer.com. Brilliant. We have identifyyourbrayer.com. So we're going to click on classic because he's a classic. And we are going to find his mold, which I am hoping is called the Mason mold. It's not. <gasps> Guys, such pain. It's not named after the first model or I've named the first model wrong. and He's not actually called Mason. So we're going to scroll now. And we're going to try and spot him. And this is why you should do a rehearsal. There we go. American Saddlebred. So 
if we look, the first model is called Mason. So if you are like me, an old, old hobbyist, um, back in the day, the moulds used to be named after the first model produced on them. They don't do that anymore and it's really confusing. Um, but we can see here that Mason um, was produced in that model in 2018. So we can see his model number is 62058. So if we go back to our spreadsheet, we can put that in. Original model name we can see is Mason. Mason. And we can see his mould is the American Saddlebred, not the Mason mould. And his year produced was 2018. So if he was produced for multiple years, we put, say, 2018 to 2020 in there, or I just leave it without anything in there if it was still continued and then try and remember to update my records when it's discontinued. Um, but he was only produced for one year because he was one of the horse of the year range. So then we want his face markings. So I can tell you he has a stripe. You can't tell from this picture, but I know that he does. We're then going to do leg markings. So left four, nothing. Uh, left hind, nothing. Right four, nothing. Right hind, sock. So all I put in is none, 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 sock. His finish is matte. He's not glossy. Year purchased. I purchased Mason last year, I think. Now, I don't know how much I paid for him because I won him in a raffle. I don't know what raffle I won him in. Now, we're going to do a special um, video on valuing models. Um, but I'm going to show you really, really quickly how to find out a value of a model. So I'm going to go to ebay.com, .com, not .co.uk. I'm going to type in Brea. I'm going to put his model number in 62058. Oh, look, there's someone trying to sell one for $99. He's not worth $99. I'm sorry, sweetheart. We're going to click on completed listings and there are none. OK, so we're going to change that to Mason. And we're going to look at some, ooh, some really nice customs. And you can see here one was sold for $39.99. So if we just do Google again dollars to pounds google will give us an answer and google will tell me that he is worth 31 pounds simple as that i know that sounds a really silly way but i probably if i was valuing him um and had got him through for the website i probably would have put him up for 25 30 pounds so i think that's a perfectly um reasonable amount so he doesn't have a sire or a dam because he hasn't got pedigree. Um, so now we're going to do this photo reference. So we've got a photograph of him. I'm going to make it a bit um, smaller because it annoys me being so big. OK, so I've got my photo and he's. we're going to pretend he's the first one we're cataloguing. So we're going to give him, we're not going to double, we're not, no, we're not going to do that computer. We're going to double click on the file name, not on the photograph. And we're going to give him his photo reference. He's the first one we're cataloguing. We are literally going to put the number one. Nothing more complicated than that. My biggest piece of advice to you is to not overcomplicate your reference system. Start at one, work your way through. So his photo reference is one. Now, Mason only came out of his box at 5 a.m. this morning. So we don't know. He has no qualifications, but he might say have qualified this year, so we could put yes. And he may have placed at some live shows. So over here, I'm just going to show you quickly the sort of points that I give. Now, I have a more complicated system for champions and stuff like that. But generally speaking, first place is six points, going all the way down to sixth place, which is one point. And then I have points for different types of champions. And we can definitely, um, we are going to do a, a seminar on how to pick horses for shows and how to grade your horses within your own collection. And we'll go into this in more detail. But if he had been to a show, say he went to a show and he got six points, he got a first in his class. Well done, Mason. He's attended one show. To work out his average points, we're just going to do some really, really simple maths. So we're going to click equals. That tells Microsoft Excel we're doing a formula. We're going to click points and then we're going to click the uh, 
dash that probably has a proper name, which is divided. So we click that and then we're going to click that. So basically I am dividing six so the number of points by the number of shows he's attended. I click enter and voila, I know his average points are six. If, however, he'd been to five shows, his average points are only going to be 1.2. If he was doing so well at shows and his points were 124, this would move up. And then you just click on this little bit here and drag it. And that will give you points for all of, um, all of your horses. So you just need to enter the data in there then. We'll have a look at my proper spreadsheet and I'll have a look at these in more detail for you um, then. OK, so horse number one is done. I'm going to have a uh, quick sip of my tea. Let's do horse number two, who is a custom. So exactly the same thing, just with a bit more information. I'm going to just make the columns. There we go. Stable name. So her stable name is Ariana. Um, her show name is uh, Aquatic Elves. Her breed, she is a unicorn. Her colour is decorator, which brings us on to a very interesting point. Do you put decorator for all of your decorators or do you add a bit more detail? I would recommend you don't do what I do and put decorator for everything because suddenly you've got 18 Brea unicorns and you don't have a clue which one's which because they're all on the same mould and you can't remember. And then you're having to go and look up your photographs and it's really boring and tedious. Um, maybe for things that are sort of decorators, you could put decorator. But if you've got a specific pattern, maybe put that. So if you've got a wood grain or a Florentine or a Copenhagen, maybe put that give you a bit more information if they're like solid blue or solid pink you could put that so gender she's a mare scale stable mate she's a brayer the artist was moi her mold is the g3 stock course and she was painted in 2018 she has no face markings and no leg markings now once you've done a few of these it's a lot easier because you can just do like that you just press N and then you press enter. So that makes life easy. Year purchased. Purchased in 2018 because I painted her. Purchase amount and paint job cost I don't have because I painted her. Value, maybe £30 I'd probably sell her at. So when I work out values for costumes and stuff, a lot of it is actually I know how much stuff sells for. Being a dealer and having been a dealer for a very long time, I'm pretty good at knowing how much I would sell it for. Um, but obviously, if I paid money for her, her value would be related to that and would probably have gone down a little bit because she might have lost some condition. So photo reference. Go in. She's our second one we're cataloguing. We don't keep them separate. We keep them all together to stop everything getting complicated. And we put two. Simple as that. So she's number two. And obviously, if she had been to some live shows, which she hasn't, we could put information in about live shows. OK, number three. Horse number three is Loki here. So his stable name is Loki. His show name is Loka Brenner. And his breed is a Fjord. And his colour is done. His gender is Stallion, I think. I'm going to have to double check that. His stable mate scale. His sculptor was Donna Cheney. He's an animal artistry. And he was painted by what? His mould is the fjord and he was painted in 2020. He has no markings whatsoever because he is a fjord and they don't have markings. So he doesn't have any. Again, year purchased. Well, I bought him in 2020. Um, interestingly, what I could put in here is my purchase amount for my blank resin and my paint job cost. So the blank china cost me £10. Um, and if I was charging someone to paint him, um, I wouldn't know how much to charge because I don't do commissions. So I'm not going to put that in because I'm just going to confuse myself. If I was going to sell him, I'd probably want maybe £60. I don't think that's unreasonable. He's very pretty and I'm not selling him, so you can go away. So we need to put his photo reference. So again, we keep everyone together to keep it simple. And he's number three. So you see how quick and easy this can be. 
This one's going to require some research. This is our CTF. So our CTF model is a Brea Mini Winnie that I found down the back of the radiator. Remarkably, he's absolutely fine. And I don't want to know how a Brea Mini Winnie went on the radiator. We'll move on from that. So his name is Alas. And his show name is Alas Mosaurus. If anyone can spot the theme for the names for today, well done you. Um, his breed. What do we think? Mustang, maybe. Colour, uh, I think he's meant to be buckskin. Um, it's a gelding, that mould. It's a miniature. His make is a Brea. <gasps> I do not know. How on earth will I find out this piece of valuable information? Oh, if only there was a website we could go to. There is. It's called Identify Your Brea. So we'll look under Mini Winnie's. And then we'll go, I cannot remember what this is called. I think it's called running something. It's not. OK, here we are, cantering. I was close. So we'll have a look here and then we'll scroll through all these pictures. There's a lot more pictures. Oh, look, he's actually called Pumpkin. Isn't that nice? Look, there he is. Does that look like a horse? Yes. Look at him. Isn't he pretty? Um, This is Pumpkin. We'll click escape. We don't we'll go away. Don't want you anymore. Um, we know his model number is 300193. Whoops, that's not the right one. Hiding that for later. Uh, original model name is Pumpkin. Um, you could put here Mini Winnie Surprise Series 3 instead of Pumpkin. Um, it's up to you what you do. I'm putting Pumpkin, but you can do whatever you want. It's your, your spreadsheet. Um, cantering, Tennessee, Walking, Horse, Mare. Maybe I got the gender wrong. Gelding. I think I got it right. Gelding. That is an annoyingly long mould name. You might want to shorten that to TWH. It's up to you. Um, I don't know why we've ended up with scale in two places. I'm going to just double check I haven't mixed something up. I haven't. I've just ended up with it in two years. Year produced. When was he produced? Go back down. Uh, 2019. And these still exist. So I'm going to put that little dash. And then when they're retired, I can put in that they're retired. Material slash finish. So you can either put plastic or you can put matte. Um, I've taken to putting matte for everything at the moment. Um, he has no face markings, but he does have a load of leg markings, doesn't he? So if we look, oh, so tiny. He has none on this one and he hasn't quite got socks. So I have a system with leg markings and this is a completely arbitrary system that I made up so you don't have to follow it. But if they are below the hocks, fetlocks even, so below the fetlocks, they are ermines. If they are between the fetlock and the hock, so there we go, they are socks. And if they go above, they are stockings. And that is my way of identifying who is who. You can do this however you want. It is your spreadsheet. The key is that you're just consistent and you know what you mean. Um, year purchased. Well, I found him down the back of the radiator like this morning, so he can be that. Um, purchase amount. Um, I bought him this morning from myself because he was down a radiator for two ninety nine. Um, I should point out that the, I'm pretty sure the reason he was down a radiator is Lily likes to go and pick them out of boxes. I suspect he was going to be a raffle prize or something like that. And Lily picked him out and carried him around. Value, um, two pounds. We could look up how much he's selling for, but I can tell you it's not going to be more than that. So photo reference, exactly the same. We're going to go in. We're going to click there and we're going to name him number four. Wonderful. Number four. And again, so he hasn't been shown, so we haven't got any information. So we're going to finish off now by doing a sloth. So I thought it'd be really nice to do a sloth. So this is Lizzie, the sloth. Sorry, Liz, I know you're watching. I don't think you're a sloth. Um, and the reason she's called Lizzie is because her show name is Fire Lizard. Um, I am sure there are loads of different breeds of sloth, like two toed sloths and three toed sloths. Um, I'm not about to do in-depth sloth research, so I'm just going to call it a sloth for now. Um, it's brown. Species of sloth. Uh, it's a Schleich, and I've got some information written down here. So it's 14793. In our ID video, I'll show you how to identify Schleich. And the original model name was Sloth, and the mold is Sloth. And the year produced was 2017. So now, 
and he has absolutely no markings because he's a sloth. And he's matte. And I got him in 2019 and he was a Christmas present from Brendan. And if I was to sell him, I'd want three pounds. Three of your British pounds for my sloth, please. Um, which is pretty much what I could probably replace him for that amount. Doesn't have a Syra dam because he's a sloth and I don't have in-depth sloth pedigrees. Um, as some of you may do. If you do, hit me up, get my sloths and parentage. Um, and he's number five. Wow. So, guys, we've done it. We've catalogued five models already. So what I'm going to do now is show you how to take your spreadsheet to the next level. You can just leave it at this if you are the kind of person who just wants an amateur basic spreadsheet. I'm going to take your spreadsheet to a level that you've never seen. What we're going to do is we're going to do something very simple. We're going to give our spreadsheet filters. So you want to select all of the data that you want to filter. And the reason I always do selecting, you don't have to, is sometimes if you've got lines or barriers or different fonts, Excel will think that you're trying to exclude stuff. So click here to collect everything. Go up here and click on data. And then you're just going to click this magic button. This is our favorite button. We're going to click filter. And this is going to make all of these little things appear here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a little trip over to my actual horse records and I'm going to show you why filters are important. So these are my actual records. So these are the records of my entire collection, uh, pretty much. If we go all the way down, we can see that so far I have um, nearly 740 OF models catalogued. There are a lot that aren't catalogued. Um, and this is why these spreadsheets are so important. And this is why the filters are so useful. So you can see the filters up here. And what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to filter your information. Now, when you're creating your spreadsheet, your horses are all going to be in order of when you created them. So you can see here that there will be gaps in the numbers if you've got models of different finishes, but they're basically going to be in that order. Now, that's great, um, but you might want them in different orders depending on what you're doing. So you might want them in alphabetical order from their name. So you click on the little arrow and then you can click sort A to Z. And what it does, it sorts everything from A to Z. So that means that um, all of these columns here will all move at the same to the same place. If you just sorted this column A to Z, all of your information would go out of order. So now I can see all of my horses whose names begin with A. And maybe I did that because I was just looking up an, um, a horse and I just wanted to quickly have a look and I can see, there we go, there's Anarchist. And I know that she's a grey American saddlebred mare um, and that she's a stable mate. And then I can identify who she is. Now, maybe I'm off to a live show and I want uh, to find out what horses I can enter into a class. So I click on my little arrow. You can see down here I can filter by anything that's been written in those cells. So first of all, I can deselect. So deselect anything. Now, imagine I was going to a show and I hadn't put any entries in the American Quarter Horse class and I wanted to see who I could enter into the American Quarter Horse class. Or maybe it's a really sort of niche photo show or something. And it's only for American Quarter Horses. So I just select here and then I click OK. And I can see every single American Quarter Horse I own. So I can then filter my data further. So actually, I'm looking for an entry for the American Quarter Horse Stallion class. So I click next to gender. I click on select all to deselect it. I click stallion and I click OK. OK, brilliant. So I know that I've got these options here, but I want to win. I want to do the best I can possibly do. I want to win this American Quarter Horse Stallion class. So I'm going to have a look and see who my best American Quarter Horse Stallion is. And <laughs> I'm laughing because I should have picked a breed where I knew that my horses had done better. 
Um, hmm, I don't think any of these guys are really going to do very well at the show, but we'll, we'll go with it. So I'm going to have a click on this where it says average points. And I want the largest to the smallest. So remember, I my points go in descending order. So the more points they have, the better the horse. And I've clicked to sort it in that order. And I know that my best is a horse called Scotland. So I'm just grab some tea. If I really, really, really want to win that class, I know that I should take Scotland. Equally. It may be that I want to qualify an American Quarter Horse for BMAX. I can see that none of these guys have qualified already. So maybe, which says it all really about my Quarter Horses, um, maybe I want to um, pick one of these to take. Now, to take these filters off, again, really, really easy. I click on Breed, and then I just click Select All. And I can click OK. And then I just need to take it off Stallion as well and it will still be reasonably sorted so we're going to sort it now and we're going to find out who our best original finished model is so we need to resort because it won't have sorted everything because it was on a filter so sort largest to smallest okay so all of these here are horses that have never been shown and because they've never been shown it will come up with like this little um error so we just ignore that and we'll go down to the first one that doesn't have that. And I know that my best horse in OF is Diesel, a uh, little stable mate. And then I can have a look through and I can go, OK, second best, third best, fourth best, fifth best, blah, 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 blah. More importantly, I can say all of these horses here have never been to a live show. So maybe I might like to take some of these guys to a live show. There might be your next champion winning horse here, but they've never had a chance to go out. And if you look in particular, you can see that there's a large number of decorators here because there is, I have so many fantasy models and there are so few fantasy classes. A lot of my fantasy models just never get shown. So I might want to think about that. And look, there's an American quarter horse here, although it's a cult that's never been shown. Um, maybe that maybe that could be my champion winning horse. It's not, I can tell you, having I know the horse. Okay, so that is how we can use filters to really help with our showing. Um, so if I just go back and sort um, this into order, make sure that you have filters over all of your columns. If you do add columns at any point, make sure to re-add those filters because it won't automatically add them. So I'm going to just go through now and just we can just have a look at what these spreadsheets look like when they're completed and what information we'll have. So you can see here that we've got really detailed information about these horses. Um, and if I wanted to identify one of them, I can use that reference number. So I am looking at this and let's find a horse that I literally won't have a clue who it is. So let's not scroll all the way down there because that's insane. We're going to go to, um, I know all these horses, I know way too many of my own horses, an odd random horse, this one, I don't have a clue who that is. Okay, so I've got this horse, Angel Pie, uh, I know it's an American Court horse, Palomino Mare, and it's on the Ginger Mould. Okay, so I might be able to go into my pony room and identify it by looking at all of my gingers, but maybe I've got three that are Palomino. Um, or maybe I can't remember what the ginger mold looks like. Um, or maybe I can't bother to walk into my pony room and look. So I can look her up by her reference. So her reference is 1291. Um, if we go into our main folder here, you can see what my main folder looks like. So every horse I have ever owned in theory should be in here. And you can either search or you can just scroll. I'm just going to scroll just to show you how insane this folder is. And I can look for one, two, nine, one. And there she is. In between a rattlesnake and another horse is model number one, two, nine, one. And I can see that she, yep, she is indeed a Palomino on the ginger mold. Um, and so that is a really good way of being able to use your spreadsheets to identify to filter and to really help you get the most out of your model horses. The other thing you can do, which we're not going to do because it will terrify the life out of me, 
is click down to the bottom underneath value. And you can click this button here. Maybe we should do it. I don't know if I want to do this. This will tell you the total value of every horse on that spreadsheet. And if you add up each of the sheets, you will have a value for your whole collection. So this is going to involve someone coming to my house and breaking in when they see this. So we click auto sum. Then we're going to click enter. And then we're going to just make the column oh, call them a bit bigger. And we're going to try and not look at the really, really scary, massive number that's just appeared on the screen. Um, that's obviously really useful if you're disclosing to your insurance company, we're going to get rid of the scary number, um, how much your collection is worth. Um, and that um, that can really, really help. And it can also make you um, really very anxious. So I don't generally recommend that. The other thing you can do, which might be quite fun, is you can actually um, use your values to see who's your most valuable model horse. So, um, oh, there you go. Pretty boring, most valuable model horse is um, a premier one that sells for quite a lot. And then underneath that is a Brer FS prize model. Um, and then a um, like unique variation of a Brer FS special one. So, um, yeah, sort of maybe what you'd expect. You may find when you're valuing that you have things that have a value that actually takes you back a little bit. So most of these are kind of what you'd expect. They're kind of like sort of special runs and things like that. Um, occasionally you find that horses have values and you're a bit taken aback. So if we just go through here, we can just see um, the differences. So you can see um, custom, you can see AR, um, you can see that some of these have got sires and dams. You can see CTF. Um, you can see with CTF that I had a massive spreadsheet malfunction and I didn't put my filters on properly. So I'm still re-adding these points. I've got them stored elsewhere. Um, so um, I'm just re-adding them in. There we go. Um, and then you can see commercial, which is really zoomed out. Um, and then you can see like other animals. So you can see here what I mean about having a breed and having a species. So I've got like rabbit and then I've got the actual breed of rabbit. And I've only catalogued one medallion. Um, and the other thing I do is I do keep a column, a spreadsheet for um, ones that I've sold. So I just move them over into the sold spreadsheet. So um, that is an overlook. Uh, overlook. Oh, uh, my words are failing me. That is a, a quick look at how you can catalogue your model horses. So I'm going to give you a moment now to um, ask any questions. Um, if there are any questions you might have, let me know and I will answer them. And I think I'm just looking and it's really massively behind because I think the Internet keeps going on and off. So sorry for that. Um, I will just type if any questions. OK, so um, you're so massively behind that I now have to sit awkwardly and wait. Um, which means that you then have to watch the awkward pause because that's how this works. Um, so I'm just going to sit here. Um, what I could do is actually I could take this stuff that I've just done and productively put it into our actual spreadsheet. That would be a fun thing to do, wouldn't it? Go back into our uh, done weird stuff. It always likes it likes adding rows. Does it for fun? Now, obviously, his um, reference number is not going to be that. Ooh, so um, it's going to have to go back. Ooh, no, we don't want to do that. Uh, what number are we at? One seven seven seven. There we go. So that just shows you sort of how you'd add them in. You just add them in as like extra numbers um, and you can have a look at all the ones that I've done recently.
Um, and I'm I'm waiting. Oh, this is so behind. It's like a good like long time behind. Okay, all right. We think we've catched caught up. So I can't see any um, obvious questions. So um, if nobody has any questions, we're going to end it there. Um, thank you very very much for watching. Um, I will put the template up that you can download. Hopefully this has given you an idea of how you can catalogue your collection. Um, and I look forward to seeing you all have amazingly detailed spreadsheets. Um, I cannot remember what next week's seminar is on, um, but it will be at three o'clock next Friday. So make sure to uh, tune in for that. I look forward to seeing everyone and I hope you've enjoyed uh, the uh, seminar of the epic spreadsheet so I will say goodbye in the form of a text box goodbye humans spelled wrong bye bye